In Davos, Antonio Manuel Vitorino, who's the Director General of the International Organization for Migration. Those numbers are awful. Um, any numbers um, are awful. We want to see an end uh, to um, this... Uh, uh, these uh, waves of, of, of people, but we know that the issues are where people start, not where they're trying yeah. to get to. I, just take me through, let's start with Libya, the Libya-European uh, route. There have been some improvements, sir, Definitely. despite these numbers. Why? Why are we seeing improvements? Well, we have reduced uh, by 80% the number of yeah. arrivals, uh, comparing 2018 mm. with 2017, because there have been a number of actions that have been developed, mm. not only by the Libyan authorities, but the Libyan Coast Guard mm. in guaranteeing the integrity of their borders, but also by the international community. Mm addressing the deep root causes of migration and preventing people from moving. But, let's be honest, the figure of those who have died last year is still extremely mm. high, which means that a lot remains to be done before the journey starts. We need to persuade people sure. that, that if they go ahead, yep. there is a risk for their lives. One of the reasons, let's be quite frank, as to why people aren't traveling that route as much as they were, is because the Italians have said, we're closed for business, right? Well, the refusal of uh, bo boats entry in Italy is a decision mm. of the Italian government. It should be in line with uh, legislation, international mm. maritime legislation. But there is a joint effort of a number of countries to save and rescue operations yeah. in the region. In fact, the Mediterranean today is a uh, sea where the traveling has become much more intense in the western part than in the sure. central part or in the eastern part. That shows that things never come to a close. We need to keep monitoring the evolution of the situation. Right, and, 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 and I understand when you say we need to get to the root causes. We also must agree that we also have, have to put an end to the business that of is... Course. Migration. This is a multi-billion dollar business, not just in the Mediterranean, around the world, with people earning... Absolutely. It, it's outrageous. What's being done to, to, to minimise that, to limit that, to, to, to find those who are making money out of people trying to move to a better life and putting them away? You're right, absolutely right. Uh, trafficking human beings, modern slavery, some people say, as a profit equivalent to drug trafficking yeah. worldwide. This means that we need to fight against those criminal networks, which uh, requires, first, raising awareness of the potential mm -hmm. victims. Secondly, having protection mechanisms to the victims themselves. Third, police and judicial cooperation in dismantling the criminal networks. And last but not least, not just lying with the operationals. Mm. You need to go upwards to the top of those criminal organizations and prosecute them and put them in jail. I want to talk about two other issues with you while I've got you here. The first is a story that is uh, making headlines uh, on CNN and networks around the world, and that is Venezuela. Mm. How big a problem is the issue of migration out of Venezuela as we see these rolling headlines. I think that uh, the situation in uh, uh, Southern America because of the situation in Venezuela, yeah. we are dealing with a very serious humanitarian situation. We assess together with the, the High Commissioner for Refugees that there are roughly three million Venezuelans in the neighboring countries in need of humanitarian assistance. They flew from the country in very difficult, lively, woods conditions. Sure. And we are there, helping them with shelter, with health care, with uh, education for the kids, because now in the recent flows, yeah. it's time more and more women and children are on the move, but there is a need for a situ uh, solution. And we see those women and children on the yeah. move in these caravans that the US president oh, yes. is alluding to time and time again. We're talking about the smallest amount of numbers compared to the yeah, numbers that you're talking course. about out of Venezuela, and yet that is front and center so far as the US president is concerned. We are also seeing children in the US being separated from their families as they cross these borders. What's your message to the US president on that. 
My message is not just to the US president, it is the world at, at large saying women and children on the move are usually, by definition, the most vulnerable migrants. Mm. So they need special care. And we need to guarantee that the families are not disrupted by the movement. You but know, they are being. Migration journey is a very harsh decision taken by people. It's very painful from the human point of view. So I think that it is our obligation, irrespective of our political positions, it is our obligation to safeguard and when, the dignity and the human rights and of the migrants. when you hear the US president talking about criminals crossing the border, rapists, murderers, if, of course do you we are see dealing the evidence with, of that? Of course we are dealing with a huge amount of people. There are good people and mm. some of them will not be that good. With that, we're going to leave it there. We thank you very much indeed for joining us.